Packer Nation, and welcome to another edition of the Absolute Packer Podcast. Today we are on to episode number 75, which I'm going to call A Tale of Two Halves. I think that is a very apt description for the game we saw on, not Sunday, Saturday, Saturday night football uh, between the Packers and the Carolina Panthers. Uh, they won by the score of 24-16. to 16. Uh, The game was, you know, the Packers. Awesome. Yeah. This, this is true. Uh, the, the Packers, uh, they look like they're going to run away with this thing. Uh, 20, yeah. 21 to three in the first yeah. half. But then the second half came around and there, I don't wait, know what, there, I don't know what the happened. Second there. half. Unfortunately for this game, there was, if, if no, this, it was if, a Saturday game on Saturdays, we stop at halftime. Everybody knows I li- this. I like that rule. They should institute that <laughs> right now this week. Really? They should just let the home team on Saturday nights institute whether they're going to play a second half or not. <laughs> it, it's, like, it's like quit while you're – exactly. It's the definition of quitting while you're ahead, right? Yep. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it was an entertaining game. And w- w- I'll say this about Carolina. I think that – were they coming in? They were four and eight or four, four and nine. Four and nine. But they played every opponent close – to include us, it looked like we were going to whoop them really good, but then they ended up, you know, within a score uh, if they got a two-point conversion. So that team, I think, is better than its record. Um, they still need some help. But, um, yeah, so with me, as always, is Ellie Christensen Woo-hoo! and Jeremy Houtla, and I am Andrew Hetzel. So what's up, boys? 11 and 3. It's pretty crazy. Um, I'll say this. If you would have told me after the NFC championship loss last year, when we were, I mean, technically we were 13 and four, but we were 13 and three in the regular season. I had, I was not confident at all that we would approach that record, that similar record this year. I figured we would be a better team, but our record would not reflect that. And it's looking like, you know, knock on wood, it's going to be something very similar. Um, we only got two games left. It's the Titans and the Bears. But, um, I mean, right now we're still the number one seed. Uh, who is it? Uh, the Saints lost to the Chiefs. It's non-conference, but still it's um, it sets us apart. And um, who else? Uh, the Rams lost to the winless There's Jets. no one else. Not winless anymore. No doubt. So the Jets, even when they're supposed to, they can't even lose right my God, they'd probably just lost the Trevor Lawrence sweepstakes or whatever. Um, but that aside, um, you know, so the Packers got it done. But, uh, you know, calling this episode a tale of two halves, I think, is uh, it fits very well because they were in total control in 90% of the first half. And then the la- I think the last drive of the first half and then going to the second half, it was the o- – I'm talking more specifically about the offense. The offense – just went away. I think five or six straight punts. I think was it five or six? Might have been six. Could have been six. Five anyway. or six thousand. It's what it felt like. It felt cool. terrible. It felt terrible. It really did. Like I, I hate any punts. You know that. Like I want them. I want. I want aggressiveness on offense all the time. Any punt is a failure. Any, <laughs> it, it, any it punt is. is a failure. Any punt is a failure. That see, it that, is. That's a good T-shirt right there too. I'm going to write that down. Yeah. Any. Any punches of fit. That's just a. That's just a fact. Yeah, that's a fact. Well, it is. we know you, mean, want, I, you want to go from fourth down all the time. Uh, but honestly, well, I mean, you feel differently. I mean, is that not a failure? It's always a failure, well, isn't it? The Jets are going to be looking for a head coach this off season, so. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, now I mean, that. Maybe, is, oh, oh that am I up for the job? <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm offering you the job. <laughs> well, he's auditioning. With, he's, he's auditioning with his fancy pants glasses. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Looking like Mike they, Zimmer. They almost look like so. So with those glasses and with the uh, the headphones, the headphones almost look like those ear protector things. So it looks like you're going to pick up a chainsaw and cut right. down a mass. A I'm going to I'm, I'm be doing this at the airport. Yeah, really. <laughs> Lord. And he's wearing a shirt. What does that shirt say? Chicago something on it? No, it says Chicago's terrible. That's what it says. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I don't believe that. But all right, I forgot to change it. <laughs> you know what? So, so truth be told, you know what? You know why I have this? Why? Because I was traveling, and there was a there was a snowstorm. I got stuck in O'Hare. Had to buy 
a sweatshirt so that I didn't freeze to death sleeping in the airport. Did you buy those glasses there too? No, no, no. Totally. I, I don't buy all of my clothes at O'Hare. <laughs> yeah, going clothes shopping. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, but it's totally drive to O'Hare. The, the fact that I, yeah, the fact that I even have this, like I would never buy just a random Chicago sweatshirt, but yeah, but it's super comfy. Yeah. Comfort is very important. It was that night. It was talk about yeah, talk about that. It was so noisy. It was terrible. Yeah, Chicago is terrible. I never really want to be there again. Agreed. We don't have to play the Bears at all this year again, do we? Yeah, last, last game. game. <laughs> <laughs> I know we do. <laughs> yep. Yep. And you know the funny thing about that, as long as we win that game, we have the number one yeah. seed. No I doubt. Know. I mean, the Titans. The Titans. I think is going to be. It's a good That's test be because they're. It's it's a good test because they're a pretty good team and. They're Derek, very good. Every time I think of Derrick Henry, I'm like, yeah. did you see the guy that he just threw down the ground this oh, week? Yes. God. This weekend? I mean, he just yes. threw another lion down the ground like yes. Josh Norman. He is uh, he ridiculous. Is, he is frightening. He scares me. Yes. Like, I, I, that's I, why I, see, I said it's like he's going to get uh, before the game starts. I'm like, he's good for 150 yards, period. That's, I mean, like, that's like, like, like that's like the floor with him against us. I see like Darnell Savage trying to tackle him by the, the shoulder pads and just getting thrown like a rag doll. Here's a good visual. Could you imagine J.K. Scott trying to tackle him? <laughs> that never happened. He might. Well, exactly. We do know that, but he might. He might literally run like a little mouse, like fluttering no, in the. He, 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 he would just run the other way, you know. Like, he would divert. They would be diverging, you know. I don't know. I would even possess you to say that. <laughs> uh, his track record. That's what would possess me to say that about J.K. Scott. Um, but I digress. So, um. Yeah, Jeremy, what, what what did you think of that? And he you, he has been um, watching the All Twenty Two and giving us some feedback before this podcast. And there's uh, there's been some interesting learnings and some some things that we that we already knew, but were kind of backed up by the film. How how did that how did that session Share go? It. Well, I I guess I came away from the game just completely distraught. You know, like we <laughs> won, we won, but it was just like, are are you serious? Another second half where we just kind of take the foot yeah. off the pedal, but. After watching the play twenty two, so you get to see, you get to see the the whole field from the side, and then they show you the play pretty much from the end zone. Mm-hmm. Um, I was thoroughly impressed with Carolina's defense. I think they just played a whale of a game. Oh, I think really? they they just they flow to the ball, they made tackles, and I think I told you guys probably on a handful of plays, it was almost like they knew what was coming. Like they almost like baited them to throw to Devonte Adams yes. or Alan Lazard on those smoke screens, you know. Um, so I, I felt a little bit better after watching it because even when the plays broke down and there was nobody to throw to, there was literally nobody to throw to. It was one what of those games it? where there wasn't much open, uh, besides, you know, maybe Aaron Jones coming out of the backfield on a few plays, but like, um, the thing that just, I, I, I can't get this. So the first quarter I texted or I messaged you guys. 17 plays, 145 yards in the first quarter, three for first three, quarter. three for three on third down. The rest of the game, so the second, third, and fourth quarter, 44 plays, 146 yards, and two for nine on third down. So we had 145 yards in the first quarter and 146 the rest of the game. Wow. I mean, think about that. Like, and we won. Most yeah. teams would not win a game oh, like God. that. I know. That's you know, you know what, what, I mean? what scared me. And it, it, yeah, I agree. And in, in, the, in the chat during the game, the Slack chat, once it started to kind of turn and we – I think we're on like our third or fourth straight punt. I was like, I kept thinking, I go, if this happens in a playoff game, we're toast. We're not, we're not only going to lose, we're going to get our ass kicked. So it's, that's why I was like, what I kept thinking was, you know, the fact that it changed so quickly, I was like, they must have seen something, discovered some weakness in game that we either weren't aware of, couldn't, because it happened so quick and so like, for like so, so you're quick and from so coaching standpoint well carolina i mean their defense i'm i'm almost you're wondering saying, if they looked over or, and they're like wait a minute they're doing or, this or is it just because they just have such a well balanced defense that they're there's no they there's no weak points and they're just able yeah, to yeah but they gave up 21 points in the first quarter 
And then it, but they were into, were they, I, so this is what I don't understand about good defenses. Were they individually able to step up or were they coached in a way to say, okay, here's the weakness, fix it. You know, like, I don't know what they did. What, what happened there? I think it was well, both. That's like, yeah. And it's a million dollar question. We don't know. I, that's why I'm looking at it. And I'm like, I am not savvy enough to look at this and be like, oh, they found this weakness. They found this tell. They found yeah. this tendency, but it, it changed so quickly that I'm like, that's, cause it I, did, it changed on a, Dying. Yeah. Tell tell me if you can remember the Carolina actually missing a tackle. Oh my god! Like, there, the, we keep right. talking about. No, you're right, and we keep talking about. You know, we are pining for t- speed on our defense. We don't have a right. lot. We have a little bit, but some of these other teams, particularly at linebacker, it's like we look at linebacker on other teams, and we're like, we are so our our linebackers are they're backups. You know, our starters are backups in other teams at linebacker half the time. So it's like when we see speed at linebacker, real speed and solid fundamentals and tackling, we're just like, we're so not used to it. (laughs) Well, and you got to think, too, like I was telling you guys about Brian Burns. Uh, When we were drafting in in 2018 at the number 14 pick, I was really, really high on him just because he was so freaking fast, you know. Um, And he yesterday he was covering Robert Tanyan. He was covering Al Lazard. This is a 255 pound outside linebacker defensive end, whatever system you play in. He's that kind of a guy. And he's rushing the passer. Jesus. Yeah. And you know, and I, I thought about that. I'm like, wow, he would have been so perfect in this scheme because they literally asked Preston Smith to cover tight ends. And what happens? It gives up a touchdown. This guy could, this guy could easily do it. You know, like just having those multi-dimensional guys, they had them all over the defense. Now, granted that there was no stars on their defense, but well, they they're, just, all, they're very young too, aren't they? They're very young, but they just played really well together. Like they just knew what everybody was doing. Yeah, and I look at that defense and I go next year and the next couple of years, they're going to be scary. When I was telling you, like, Ooh. you know, right now I just want to trade our defense for theirs. I I, I truly do. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, you, put, you, awesome. you give oh, us yeah. Carolina's defense and I mean, they're not dynamic, but you give us their defense. Yeah. I feel pretty good about Super Bowl and, 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 and making that claim right now. Like I truly do, you know, so. Um, I, I just, I came away so impressed with, with how that, that team played considering that they're four and nine, but like I told you guys, they lost to K- uh, Kansas city by two. They lost New Orleans by three. Yeah. They've been in every single game this year. Yeah. And it's just been a different outcome for them. They've lost the majority of them We're us. We've been in very close games in the majority of the year and we came out on top. So it's just oh, a, right. it's a tale of two teams. Like literally if they could just pull out a few of those games. They could be fighting for a playoff spot, and unfortunately, you know, though, you know, there's enough games in the year that the pretenders get found out, though, don't you think? Because Chicago was was coming out on top early on, and eventually, that just you just you don't you don't luck out and just win by a couple points. Cons- you know, just, I would counter that yeah, only, only 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 this. Like, yeah. okay, think of look at us, <laughs> look at the Packers, and this is like I said, it's it's kind of like in the back of my head. I keep thinking it's like. I remember when we got together pre-COVID and we were getting ready for the 49er NFC championship game. And, you know, I, did I think we were going to win? I was like, eh, I think we have a decent chance, but you know, yeah. and it's like yeah. that game revealed we were yeah. a big pretender big time in my opinion. Um, so, and that was revealed in the NFC championship game. Now had we beat somehow the 49ers, um, would we have beat Kansas city? Uh, no, I think we would have gotten housed by Patrick Mahomes, but you, you could argue. And again, I kind of think about this and this has always been the back of my mind. Even in this year, I'm like, are we going to get exposed in the playoffs as a quote pretender? Cause we right. were even competitive in the NFC championship game. It wasn't like our, our defense was awful, but our offense was awful too. Right. But I would go back and look at Pettin's scheme, which is to never get beat over the top. And what does Kansas City do? They beat you over the top. You know, they they want you to play man up and they want you to play single high safety zone so that they can just run past you. We don't do that. So I would feel pretty comfortable playing Kansas City just because our scheme says you keep everything underneath you and you don't like and you don't get beat over the top. So and and New Orleans was kind of doing that yesterday. They were kind of playing that same kind of a scheme, even though they gave up like 500 some yards of offense and were just completely dominated. You know, and the score was only the score was not indicative of of that game. Um, but back to my point, like it's just, you know, Pettin, 
sourcing out a game plan against Kansas City, I, I can't think of anybody who could source out a better game plan just because, and I'm not saying that just because I, I don't like Mike Patton. I'm not condoning him. But just what he wants to do, <laughs> that plays into the strength of us and does not allow Kansas City to beat us just hands down. Like, they got to earn yeah. it. You know what I mean? Um, they truly have to earn it, you know? So uh, I'm not saying that that's, what, uh, that's what's going to happen, but I don't feel like if we go into Kansas City, I automatically think we're going to lose. You know, it's funny. No, that's interesting. I, yeah, I think there's some truth in that. What, what's funny, and this would never happen because it's Mahomes, but man, it, say you get to the Super Bowl and it's like Kansas City goes, you know what, Patrick, you're great, you're MVP, but hand it off every freaking down. <laughs> and they would kick the tar out of us. Um, I'm still waiting for some team to just run, 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 run. And for whatever reason, we really haven't seen it except for maybe the Dalvin Cook game. And uh, they beat the pants off us. Um, so I'm almost thinking of that, too, you know. Right, but right. Um, but, you know, like the run defense has played considerably better. I mean, they're not they're not lights out, but um they seem to be coming to the ball a lot quicker than what they did in the, in the first half of the year. Um, and then, you know, these running backs would just have these big break on runs and, and stuff like that. We're not seeing as many of those. They've improved. You know, I'll give you that. I mean. And I I, I, I was going to send you guys some clips of yesterday's game. Um, as, as, mad, as bad as we've been harping on Christian Kirksey, he had some, uh, some stuffs uh, of running backs uh, in the hole. Uh, but Kamal Martin is – hands down our best run linebacker that we have uh he's so aggressive and you know what he's gonna he's gonna bite and make the wrong read sometimes but i'd rather have that than the guy that sits back and lets the play come to him gets yes, run over absolutely agree. gets run over and I then it's a touchdown agree. so you know right. I, I think I we have agree. we have something good there and i think we have something good with chris barnes chris barnes now he kind of reminds me of he kind of reminds me of MVS where he's he's hot and cold. Like he'll have a really good game, and there are games early in the year where he just did not look like he should be out there. So he just has to bring the consistency up. And yesterday, I think we saw that. We saw a very consistent. He said, they said he, his injury. He had an eye injury. What the hell happened? Did somebody gouge out his eye? Probably. Probably. That's oh yeah, yay. We're gonna see him with an eye patch. <laughs> nice. Oh, well, he came back and played, so it must not have been too bad. Yeah. You know. Um, but no, he, he played, he's got good instincts. You know, he's undrafted, but he looked good. And well, your he, point started. About, he started, he oh, yeah. started over Christian Kirksey, Martin. Um, they just got to give him more snaps. Cause I agree with you. It's like, yeah, I was telling you guys, I said he didn't come into the third defensive series. I just, which is weird, you know, but whatever you, you, you do wonder with, I don't know if it's Petten or LaFleur or other, even other teams and just the outlook. I think a lot of, a lot of teams, not all, but a lot of teams and a lot of coaching staffs, there's like that unwritten rule. Where it's like, we got to ease these rookies in, you know? And every now and then you see a team like the Vikings <sighs> who have a Justin Jefferson. Thousand where they're yards. just like, Thousand just, yards. Just, they're like, this guy has talent. Let him go. Let him help. Don't sit there and bottle up somebody because they're just because they're a rookie. Well, and I was Stupid. telling you this in their chat yesterday. If you get these rookies, you already know what their strengths are. So put them in positions where they're already strong. Yeah. You know, like, and, and to me, A.J. Dillon, goal line situations, short yardage situations. That was the only carry he had in the whole game, wasn't it? And he did 19 yards? That was a first down. Um, I thought he got, yeah, he he had, had like 18 he had yards, yards on it. 16, yeah, 18, like whatever. Like, yeah, yeah you know, like but one carry the whole game. Um, I, I truly can't understand that, that. You spent your first two draft picks on very <laughs> inexpensive players, and you have one that's available that can be used in scenarios that would benefit the team, but they don't. You're like, yeah, you don't know what? Get that he, at all. He's had over 900 carries in three years at Boston College. He can run the ball, like he can do it. So put him out there. I don't care. Like just put him out there. My, Give him a hand. I think I, I think I mentioned this. My theory on him, this is just a theory, is that he's he's <laughs> I really hope. needs yeah, he really needs to get his pass protection up. Because yeah. we do know that, I mean, with Rogers out there doing it, it's like if you can't pass protect, you're not gonna get out there. Right. Could be number it. two. I mean, Jamal Williams and Aaron Jones, when they were first rookies in the in the league, they were not good pass protectors either. But they weren't so. playing a whole lot either. Right, right. Um, well, which that could I, be why. I, I don't understand that philosophy. Like I'm going to put my, my best guys out there. I don't care if it's a second round draft pick. He's a second round draft pick. You spent well, a the other whale, th a fortune on the guy. Yeah. Use him. 
And the other thing is, even though like, oh, he can't pass protect all that well. Well, he's a running back. His primary thing is to <laughs> run the ball. Right. It's like if you draft a wide receiver and he's like, he's yeah. If you draft well, a Justin Jefferson, you're like, I'm not going to let him out there because he doesn't block well on screens. Well, and you know like, what? That's what? why in short <laughs> situations, what are you going to be doing the majority of the time? You're going to be running the ball. So yeah. put him out there in those situations. No, I agree. I, I, that that philosophy of, I think there's just a, a mentality that's still out there where it's like you got to ease these rookies in. Da, 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 and it's like there's only one position you you should do that with, and that's quarterback. And as much as I say that I hate that they they drafted Jordan Love, they're doing a good thing with him by just easing him along. Because uh, when when he was at Utah State, his his sophomore junior year, uh, he had a really good year. But his last year, he did not do very well. He threw more picks and interceptions, uh, and, and there was some question about his judgment. You know, so when a guy comes into the NFL and you're questioning the judgment, then you need to you need to coach him, and that's they're doing the right thing with him, you know. But like AJ Dillon, I just don't see why he can't just get more carries, and uh, there's just no reason uh, he's just Saving wilting and playoffs. wasting on the bench. You know, you know that's what I'm hoping think, for. <laughs> you know what? You know, I was just thinking of maybe it, the Super Bowl year when they won. Remember James they Starks. unleashed James Starks in the Philly game, and I remember like when James Starks came in, he was on PUP for a lot of the year too, though he was hurt. Um, that part of the reason, but when they, when I remember watching that game and like the first time they gave him the ball, he ripped off like a 15 yard run and he looked pretty spry and they put the, they put the, uh, the camera over on Andy Reed. He was still coaching the Eagles then. And he had a look on his face like, Oh my God, this guy, he was like, Oh, Oh, and he kind of, you know, and James but, Starks that game had his first career game. He had like 23 carries, 121 yards. Yeah, he just lit it up. Sweet. You know? And that was, man, if we're going to reminisce, baby, uh, Tremont Williams, that was his coming out party when he mm. picked off Michael the Vick. In the end. He had a good game. And then, oh, yeah, right, right. I'll ne- I, I still remember when Michael Vick dropped back to pass and threw it in the end zone. And right when he threw it in the end zone, I'm thinking, because he still had some time. I was I was like, oh, my God, somebody's open. And then I and then I watched it and I was like, ah. And then obviously picked it off. And that was, man, Tremont Williams. That was fun times, baby. He's with the Ravens now. Yeah. He was. He's one of my all-time favorite Packers, I think. Yeah. Um, undrafted, too. Un- yeah, undrafted. He bounced around. I think he was on, like, the Texans practice squad. And that was back, you know, when, when Ted and those guys could scour. Remember, they, they found Sam Shields undrafted. And undrafted in his rookie year, he played a pivotal role as a cornerback, you know? Yeah. Um, man, it was... <laughs> I miss those days. Hey, guess what? Oh my God. It could happen this year, so... We need we need more stuff to come together, but yeah, I mean they could go. I mean, well, obviously they're not going to be a six seed. That helps, um, but I think they they um, and actually th- that brings me to it. Kind of dovetails onto this. So when when the game turned, one thing that I think we all noticed is that the the Carolina started sniffing out Devonte Adams, and that Rogers loves to throw a lot of quick outs, and you know do he lateral plays basically where they're not going vertically down the field and Carolina really started to sniff that out. And when that happened, it seemed based when I was just watching with what I could see, not the all 22 that nobody else was really stepping up. Once they shut down Adams and took that away and the offensive line was starting to get a little shaky. It was like, and on the all 22, I can't imagine a whole lot of people were open, but no, but this, and what I'm getting at, sorry, what I'm getting at is look, we know when the playoffs come, everybody's going to be keying on Adams and they just put out film on there on how to, you know, the defense basically for Carolina was like, you know, you're going to sniff out these quick outs. So, so, and they're probably Packers got to figure out what they can do to open up other guys. And if other guys can't get open, they're going to have to scheme the hell out of them. Well, and they've been doing that for the good chunk of this year with MVS. He's been the go route guy, you know, Um, this game, he didn't do it. I don't think he had, I don't think he had uh, – no, he didn't have any touches, any balls thrown his way. Um, you know, that's that's worrisome. But, like, if we are looking, I think the only looking thing to that... break a defense, we need MVS to give us a deep threat. We need a number, so that... a true number two to emerge. And that still hasn't happened. I really do think yeah. – Well, like you, said, like, like you said last episode, Lazard's coming back from a core injury, and that takes a while to come back from. Yeah. Bad um, drop in the, the third. It was uh, like that beautiful sideline pass that Rodgers had to throw a dart. Do you but, know that play when I watched that? It was the Jared 22, Cook play. I was just going to say that was the same exact 
I mean, it was, it was play a as per- Jared Cook, and it bounced off his hands, man. Yeah, that was, and that was a that was a late third and long, and we needed that, that to get in field goal range. That was ugly. before and halftime. Even going back to Adams, Adams had, I mean, he got shut down by the defense, but also he had two bad drops. Mm-hmm. There was one where it was it was kind of a tougher over the shoulder catch in the first half, I remember. But he should have caught it. If it hits a receiver's hands in the NFL, you got to catch it. It, it hit his hand. And then there was that quick slant in the second half that just – so it was a very un-Adams like performance even mm-hmm. without getting shut down by the defense. Um, yeah. But we need – I mean, like I said, I think – I mean, Tanyan, he had a touchdown early, but then he kind of disappeared, and he had some lousy blocks. I, did you see that when Rodgers, when he whiffed on a, a screen block for um, – yeah, he got Jones and Rodgers was on his ass, and as he should have been because it was like, it it, it was very ugly execution. But what I what I kind of worry about projecting out there is, again, when we get to the playoffs, they are going to put everything on Devonte. He's going to be doubled and tripled, and they're going to be good teams with better defenses. We better freaking get our act together on the ski because look, guys aren't going to get any faster. Our wide receivers aren't going to get any faster. They're not going to grow any taller, so we're going to have to well, develop some scheming. Why do we keep saying that, though? Who's going to be better? <laughs> no, I mean, really. Like, I mean, I, I feel Well, like I'll give you Car- that. I mean, there isn't a, a Car- huge jump, but... Carolina's defense was great. We're going to play the Titans. They're good. Um, and I'm talking playoffs, so it's like, we're, we're going to see Tampa. So they're gonna they're gonna step it up a notch. Tampa, I think we could. We, I think we can take them. You know, we played we got them slaughtered I, the first time, though. But I, we, I do worry about that. It's a bad matchup. It is. it is, you know, I, I, I and I, the other thing the Packers have to do is on offense. Look, and this is going, this again. is, they're not this making is, it to the playoffs. This is, yeah, this <laughs> is going, look, this is no, seriously, this is going back years, way, way into McCarthy, where if you get pressure on Rogers without blitzing, that's they have good. no answer. That's they have good. no answer. They have no answer. And that's what, that's what and you'd figure you'd be, you'd be like, Oh, we got Aaron Jones who could do this. It's, I, I mean, it. Carolina blitzed a, a few times yesterday, but for the most part, they rushed three or four guys. Oh, I know. And they were getting pressure all the time. And the O-line was not looking good. Oh. It was all not helping. But what I'm saying is, I just don't understand how they don't – how do you not have some kind of outlet for Rodgers? If you can just – if you can simply – look, that 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 Ooh. is a that is a recipe. Well, we got Aaron Jones. How do you not find a way to get him be – let him be a bad – you got Tanyan. Um, so – you got to use more scheme is what I'm saying. If they can consistently get pressure on them, you got to have some kind of answer for that. That yeah. is, look, 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 now I'll say this. It has been the recipe. That's how you even beat Tom Brady, you know, who's got six Super Bowls. You get consistent pressure um, without blitzing and you can get to him. But even, you know, Brady and the Belichicks and all those guys, they would still come up with ways to do that because I'm sure they were games where they were getting consistent pressure, but you got to, it was anyway, an, I, it, I, wor- I worry that we're not going to have something to counteract that because we sure as hell didn't have something in this game. Well, I mean, this is this is a true shiny moment for Lafleur to come up yeah. with something because um, you've got some time. If, if there's one knock I have against Lafleur is in game adjustments. I think I was mentioning this yesterday. I he, like he comes in and he says, "I'm going to run the ball or I'm going to pass the ball." One of the two, and it doesn't work, and then he doesn't have the ability to adjust to look at the defense and say, Hey, they're playing a soft cover too. I've got all this, these, I could put run routes underneath and get five, 10 yards a pop. Like, you know, you have to look at the defense and figure out ways and look at your play call sheet and say, okay, this play will work. This play will work. But like yesterday, we didn't see that. It was the same thing over and over and over again. And that's the one thing I think that really, I think, if he has to improve upon, it's right there. It's in-game adjustments and, and being able to see everything on the fly and just interpreting that and saying, oh, you know what? I got the play that could beat that. I, I completely agree. The thing I also, I, I do kind of worry about that coincides with that is, look, again, I made the comment about our guys are going to get faster and taller. I mean, Lazard, he's undrafted. Tanyan, he's undrafted. I mean, they don't have, that's why we want these guys to step up, but they're still athletically and talent wise limited so it's almost more on on Lafleur to scheme it up because we don't have high picks at those other positions they are who they are you know yeah you know I, I don't want to say that you know when you you have all these talented players because they're high picks you have a better opportunity but I think on offense well it's, I th- a, I it's, it's such a razor thin 
line in the NFL. I'd agree that. No, I just, I, I mean, I think the, the talent level is leveled off. So you have two guys on offense that could probably step their game up more so than what they are doing right now. And that's Aaron Jones and Devontae Adams. Can you say that MVS can do that? Can you say Lazard can do that? Can you say Robert Tonyan can do that? We haven't seen a consistent, um, uh, a consistent, like, amount of of consistency from any of those guys. So you do bring up a great point that we have not seen it. So we are questioning it. So there's no reason that you shouldn't, you know, especially when you're 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 solely depending on Adams and and Jones to carry the team and Rodgers, you know. Um so that is a concern. And yesterday kind of brought a concerning trend for me was because they shut down Adams and because we really don't have, you know, that that unique multidimensional talent, uh, who's going to step up in that that frame and that time frame or that game to, to take over? Yes. And we didn't have Great. that yesterday, you know. So um, I you know, would think the floor it would be Aaron yesterday. Jones. I well, would think it should be Aaron Jones. And you know, to Lafleur's defense, I mean, granted, Williams was hurt in the first quarter, but like, I think that was a big deal. It was. That yeah, was it was. Huge, I think it was a huge deal. deal. I, I. And, I and I think the fact that that uh, that Rogers had to run it a couple times, I think that that kind of showed that. I may, you know that I think Williams th- had a lot to do with even the line caving because he's a great blitz pickup guy. Yeah, I think that was. I I, like, I, I, I love I, Williams as you guys know, but I, yeah. I I really do think that was a key cog. As I look back a day, two days later. Yeah, two days. Two days. <laughs> they all seem I, the same, right? Yeah, um, and I don't want to say that they collapsed, but they really did. I mean, like, so one player is out, and the the whole the yeah. whole offense just collapses. Well, like, Jeremy, I just... think you mentioned that, and I asked it if in the second half they were giving more help to the line. I really don't think they were because they want to still run their same scheme. And the more guys you 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 leave home for the line to help to help out at the line, like tight ends who chip and wide receivers, they can't go out in the pass pattern. So there's that give and take. And so I kind of understand that. And that also makes me think, man, they normally would rely on Williams to yeah. be, to do some of that. Well, and, and he, so to your, to your point, I was just going to say, um, I can think of two plays at the top of my head where, uh, Mercedes Lewis knocked, uh, the defensive end on his butt. Nice. Um, and, and it was, it was a pass play. Like he literally was at the end of the line of scrimmage at the outside tackle and he, was taking off and then kind of just threw his hands on Brian Burns and knocked him to the ground. Those are the things that when you're talking about, you know, did they help? Did they, you know, give any help to the tackles? Uh, did they? they a few times, but it wasn't consistent, you know, yep. like, yep. and that, that was a Mike McCarthy staple was he wanted his tackles to pretty much be an island to protect it. Yeah. He um, never gave help. Right. And you're, kinda, and you're kind of seeing that with Lafleur's offense, but Lafleur has a tendency to help more you know, when it's needed, but, um, you know, they really haven't had to do that because they've had Bakhtiari and Bulaga for so many years that, um, you know, they never had to help their tackles this year on the right side. They've had to help a little bit more. And that's where Mercedes Lewis has been uh, blocking a lot and, and knocking guys on their butt. Yeah. Um, yeah, even, I mean, look, Bakhtiari got whooped a couple times in this game. Uh, he did not have his, his greatest game. I mean, was he a sieve? No, but it was still troubling to see your the now highest paid offensive lineman in the history of the league uh, get beat. Well, and <laughs> I, I, I'll raise this point. Was he trying to look over his shoulder and help Patrick out because Patrick was having a bad game? It is that weird dog. I don't know. Effect. Yeah, where you're like, you're like, I mean, the guy you're going up against is could be this Burns guy, mm-hmm. right? And it's mm-hmm. like, he he's enough to handle for one guy and you're, you're already starting to do that. And then you look and you're like, how's this guy doing? And by the time you do that, you're whooped. <laughs> well, by the I time mean, you even think that you're whooped. And that's what Carolina was doing. They were taking their rookie, Derek Brown, who's a massive dude. I mean, he's six, five, three thirty, and they were putting him at the three technique. So they're putting him on the left guard's left shoulder. And with that, because of the, the game that he was having, he had his first two sacks of his career. Bakhtiari does have to look inside and say, Hey, does, does, does he need my help? If, if I can just control my guy, does he need an extra hand just to kind of, you know, could corral the guy. So did that happen yesterday? I, I don't know, but like you kind of have to think that it had something. And to Lucas do with Patrick it. was, was he, he was playing left guard. Yeah. 
And he, and he gave up three sacks. I, I counted that. He gave up three sacks. That one, that one you showed me where he got pancaked. Oh. He got just ran over. The guy practically like he hit him, knocked him down, and like almost stepped on his chest. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was, was it was it brutal. Was brutal. It was brutal. Um, so we need. That's why I asked about Lindsley. It's like we need Lindsley back so we can get Elk yeah. Jenk, Elkin. Elkin. Do you guys think that that it being a Saturday game had any impact on that? And what I mean by that is it's off schedule. For well, well, I think that that's an de- interesting. I, I think both defenses played really well. Like uh, our, the Packers defense played really well for them. <laughs> I know they did play pretty good, and our offense underperformed. And their offense, maybe their offense was. That's played a, played the never, expectations, you know, like I just feel like that could have been something. I, I, I just don't know. Nobody like, ever did, plays did, Saturday games. Ever. Did they did they have like an extra half day to not prepare properly? And did that matter? Did, are they just off their game because it's a night game? Like, uh, I don't know. It could be everything. All the above. Right. It's all I like, don't de- know. Death by a thousand cuts. And then it's a night game with nobody in the stands because like a night game, you know, you maybe you can make a go of it if the stands are full and you get that little extra burst of energy. But when there's nobody in the stands, man, and it's night, I'd be ready for a nap. You know, and I mean, playing right about Carolina, this time. <laughs> I think, you know, I think there's even something else to be said about that. We, we look, I think we've even said in the chat too during the game where. This team, I think it's safe to say, it lacks a killer instinct. It just does. Even when, I mean, when they're up by three scores, they don't seem to want to bury the other team. It's almost like they do, in general, pussyfoot around. And this was the first time they've been pussyfooting around, and it really caught them, where it was like it it just went from really good to just and talking about the offense. Um, I don't know. It was. But it, I guess one of the saving graces is it happened now. So we still have some time to fix it. Um, but look, I think I do worry about that. You know, the film's kind of out there. Uh, they better be, they better have something in their back pocket to counteract that. Cause you know, once you put that stuff out there, people are going to exploit the hell out of it for sure. Well, Again, hey, once you get to right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, once you get to the playoffs, you know, it, those are the best, the, the best of the best, you know, mm-hmm. again, I think in the NFC, there isn't like one great team. Um, but still, you're not playing Carolinas. You're right. not playing teams with losing records in the playoffs. And and this is where I have to think. Except the NFC East. Um, right. This is where I have to think, hey, the NFC East, literally Washington, watch out for them. They're not a good matchup for the Packers. Their defensive line is kicking butt now. They're you know what's funny? But that, that whole thing about matchups is it's like, what? I think our defense, any offense is a bad matchup for our defense. <laughs> It almost feels like like it's a bad matchup. Um, there's there's only uh, a few games or a few teams that seem to be a bad matchup for our offense, and it's the it's the teams that can get pressure without blitzing, consistent pressure. At, but against our defense, I'm like every team could potentially be a bad matchup. You know what I mean? I really feel that way. If they can run the hell out of the ball, it's a bad matchup automatically. But we we sit here and say, oh, they got this great pass defense that can keep everything in front of them, and I'm like, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> That's just me thinking out loud, but it's like, you know, against our defense, who isn't a, a bad matchup? <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, we, we just have these bad visions in our mind of the past, you know, and, and exactly and so many bad games, you know, and I think that kind of, that kind of, yes, I that kind of burns in our craw, you know, I, I agree. especially yours. I know that last year, the San Francisco game. And, and for me too, uh, that just really stuck to me. Yeah. Um, and you, I, do you remember in that 49er game after the first quarter, I'm not kidding you. Every time the 49ers went back on offense, I was like, they're going to, they could take it to the house. Whoever's yeah. back to run the ball every time. I was like, they could easily take it to the house. That's how bad it got. And that, yeah, it's stuck in my head. Right. So we have all these bad memories and that's why it's, it's like a, you know, it's like your child They that you wake up in the middle of the night and you're having this bad nightmare and they're screaming and they're crying. They're like, what the heck, you know? And for Packer fans, that's what we're going through. We're just like, Oh my God, we're going to have, you know, rookie monster I know. run for we, we think yards. It's like, and, we think it's going to be know. inevitable that the defense is going to give up 88 points in a playoff loss. It's like, Right. I just, I, I have to keep telling myself that we're literally loving in three. We're sitting in the driver's seat. Um, right. we, everything is in our corner right now. We just have to take it. You know what I mean? It, it's I there. Can. It's there for us. Take it now. And that's what we get back to the killer instinct part right now, because we're starting to get into the gist of things. Right. Let's see where this team 
if they truly have this killer instinct that they've just been hiding on us the whole year. Yeah, you 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 think about that. You're like, maybe they're saving this for the playoffs. <laughs> you know, like, I right. This is the NF. This is the NFL. This isn't high school football. Right. right. <laughs> you know, it's like, but who the hell knows? Um, well, maybe they are. That'd be something. It'd be nice. You know. But all right, um, we've actually I, hit pretty good on a lot of the notes here, except for a few key things in the defense. So, a couple of things. Um, I have to spotlight. Uh, Adrian Amos, he has been playing yeah, he was like outstanding the past month. He was and everywhere. He, mm-hmm. I think he had three or three or four passes defensed in the game alone, and he had at least two tackles that held to minimal gains. He was he and was outstanding sack. and a sack. He was out. Yeah. He that might have been his overall. That might have been his best game as a Packer. Yeah. Does he have a new agent, too. Yes. <laughs> I mean, what's going on with that really? guy? It's Bus Cook. Oh God! Remember, remember Bus. As Favre would always say, "Yeah, you go need go. You need to talk to Bus. Bus Cook. <laughs> That's Bus Cook. Bus or Buzz? Bus. Bus no, Cook. Nobody knows. And, and he, who did he? He looked Bus Cook. He looked like he looked like a used car salesman from he the eighties. <laughs> and he had a thick old Southern accent. It's like I just loved. I I could just imagine seeing him walking into the Packers' office, like negotiating for Favre's big contract, and like goes and he goes. All right, here's what you can do. You're gonna write a check for about a hundred million dollars, and I'll see you next year. And a John Deere tractor. <laughs> <laughs> bus cook. Yeah, that's bus. We talked to bus. Wow. Okay. Enough of the impressions, right? Um, but yeah, Amos. I don't know if you had a, what what. I have to imagine what you saw on the uh, the all twenty two kind of reinforced my thoughts. Thinking, he, yeah, I was going to say been I, steady ascent. Savage has been playing well too. Yeah, but Amos, I think, is playing even better. Yeah, la- uh, yesterday's or uh, Saturday's game, uh, he was the the MVP of the game, hands down. There's nobody out there. Maybe Barnes could compete he, a little bit with that. But- he is a fan t- of late. It's like if I was somebody teaching tackling on this team, I'd be like, He's watch what Amos does. He does not throw his body around. He comes in with purpose and he wraps the hell up. Mm-hmm. And the opposite of that would be Kevin King. Right. <laughs> and we'll get to Kevin King here shortly, I feel like. But like, you know, tackling's all confidence. You know, do you have do you have the confidence that you can take that guy down? That's what yeah, it's no simply doubt. what it is. And if you don't, you're throwing yourself at him, I guess. Right, right. You know, um and that's why they always talk. They, they literally teach you in the younger, you know, you know, peewee football and stuff like that. They teach you, you know, the art of tackling. It's, you know, squaring up, tackling. Yep. squaring up, wrapping, you know, up. wrapping up and, and, just and going. going low, you know? Um, and, and that's Amos has been doing that to a T uh, as of recently. Um, so we have no concerns there. Uh, you know, Barnes had a good game yesterday, but you know, let's, let's talk about Kevin King. Um, Throwing his body around. <sighs> He had. Look like he's trying to tackle. Yeah, he had his worst game. He, the receivers that he was covering yesterday, had nine catches for 127 yards. Jeez, Louise. And five first downs. So whoever he covered ha- was having a good game. Um, that was a concern. And and the reason why people are attacking him is because Jair Alexander exactly. is literally he's on shut fire. Down. I mean, yeah. do you remember Jair that player? is an All Pro. He is. He is his side of the field or whoever he's covering is basically. Well, do you remember that that play in the end zone um, in the later part of the game? I don't remember if it was the third quarter, fourth quarter, but the the Panthers were getting down to the red zone and they threw a ball up to DJ Moore and Alexander played a textbook. So he pushed the guy to the corner of the end zone to, to keep him away from the ball. And the, it was textbook. And that's why teams don't go after Alexander because he, oh, just, he caught it, but he caught it out of bounds, right? Or something like that. Am no, I thinking of the, right the guy wasn't even close to it because oh. Alexander pushed him completely out of the play. You know, kind of, kind of, kind of, he kind of guided him towards the sideline or the the corner of the end zone. So he wasn't even near it, you know, and it was just textbook how you play defensive back uh, in the red zone, you know, like, um, so teams are going to naturally go after Kevin King. They're going to naturally go after right. uh, Channon, uh, Channon Sullivan. Um, those are the guys that are going to see Kevin a lot King of action. Is kind of the MVS of the secondary. Because <laughs> he's had some pretty good games and then he's had some clunkers. Yeah, I would say his game so far this year, it's been steadily kind of going downwards. Um, and he's I, a free agent. And he's, he's a free agent. So it's not trending well for him. No. Um, but 
you know, I, I get back to how they play him. I don't think they play him in the right position with but, all the soft coverage. You need right. to play man. Up on but even ground. yesterday he was up on the script on the line of scrimmage and getting in the receiver's face, but he was getting beat. Um, he gave up that pass to DJ Moore. It was like a 50 yard pass. Uh, well, early that's, what I, that's, that's what I'm thinking of. He timed his jump bad. There yeah. was one where it was a long pass where like he could have had it, but he timed his jump so bad that it, the ball went over his hand. And there was no reason him being six, three, that ball to get over. Exactly. Him. He just, it was a, it, it literally was, he timed the jump wrong because mm-hmm. had he timed it right, he would have easily batted that down. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I, I don't think, I, I think it's a good chance he might come back on like a sweetheart deal. If the Packers might take him back, but he's not going to be making a buku money. And I can't see because of injuries and stuff too. I can, and, and, and play like this. I can't see him breaking the bank on the outside. Do you on in free agency? Um, no, but we, I don't think a lot of people had the same thought process when it came to Casey Hayward either, you know? Um, fair enough. You know, I don't know. Like scheme plays a role in a player's part of me just doesn't, I don't want us to have to draft another freaking cornerback because it seems like we have to draft a cornerback high in every draft for the past 38 years. (laughs) Get used to it next year. That's going to be one of our highest priorities in the draft. It will be, you know, Hmm. Again, I mean, it, 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 look, it, it has become that uh, one of those premier positions too. I mean, it's not like, yeah, it's a key play. Yeah. Yeah. It has because literally, you know, what are we talking about yesterday? We're talking about a guy who gave up over a hundred yards passing to the receiver that he, he was covering and almost, we almost lost the game. So is it important to seal that area up? But he also up picked second? up the fumble that was caused by Chris Barnes. Yes, All he had to do was basically be there. And you know, the play, that play absolutely infuriated me because we had our one, four, six, our dime personnel on the one yard line. We had one defensive line. That's the Mike Petten special. Kenny Clark. And then we had both Smith brothers. Rashawn Gary on the line of scrimmage. And then we had Chris Barnes and all these defensive backs on the one yard line trying to protect the goal. It's like, yeah. you know, I mean, you're just sitting there. You want to drop. Shouldn't be surprised. Though. Drop the F. I shouldn't be surprised, but come on, dude. Come on. Yeah. That's like going to the playground and you're a first grader and you're going to compete with the fifth graders on the court. Do you think that's going to work out well for you? Most why why does he do it then, though? I mean, that's fine for me. Why is he doing it? Why? <sighs> I don't know. Like, <laughs> we, we, we've, been, we've been seeing this for so many years, and we're wondering why. But, like, I think he just – he values speed over, over girth. Like, he just – he likes guys that are skinnier, faster, and can move. But we're not really seeing that. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's just an aisle. You, you yeah, gotta, right, you got, right. You got you to gotta, you gotta make up for it with – if you're if you're gonna have speed and and girth, you better make up for it in other areas. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you're gonna get you're right. trucked. Yeah. You're right. So, you're right. I don't know. Um. So yeah. Uh. Now, Rashawn Gary. He. Uh. I think he. I. It's safe to say he continues to flash. You know, he's kind of leveled off a little bit, but he's also he's been getting banged up again. Uh. Yeah. He he was hurt the previous game, and then he got hurt in this game. I think he, he did come back, but um. That, it seems to be that that could be the one thing that kind of stops his steady. It's not a sharp ascent, but his steady ascent is injuries getting dinged up. Yeah. And I also think too, I, I just, I, I truly don't like him at outside linebacker. I think he loses a step just because he's so far outside the tackle. Yesterday he was playing the three technique. What the three technique is you're, you're playing over the shoulder of the guard in between the guard and tackle and 67, he lit him up on two plays that I can remember. And I'm like, Okay, that's where you put him. Like, you know, if you're beating somebody, and that's what they were doing to Lucas Patrick, they were putting that Derek Brown on him because they knew he was kidding, it's gonna beat him, and they knew they had a matchup problem there. And I saw the same thing with Rashawn Gary on 67. Like, put him there. Put him there. How, how is he doing against the run? Um, he because he's so aggressive. TBD. Yeah, there, there's that. But I think just because he's so aggressive and he plays a game so quickly, I think he runs himself out of plays. Um, I think that's one of those things he's going to have to get better at, and that's probably and he will. one of the reasons why they do what they do with him. And I, I agree. Um, but look, it, the whole Preston Smith for Sean Gary, I got to think salary is a part of that. <laughs> that would I come mean, to play this offseason. You, you know, know? Like we talked about last year. I or... would be stunned if Preston Smith is back at his same salary. 
I, I I don't I'm not to say he'd be that he I'd be stunned if he's back, but at his same salary. Well, and they and they signed both Smith brothers in essentially a two year contract, so they're in their second year right now. Could they move on from Preston? They could. Um, and do they have somebody to fill in for him? They do. Uh, but really we're seeing a very incomplete grade on Gary this far. I know. You know, I know there's people that have said that he should play over Preston Smith and I agree to that to an extent, but Gary hasn't had the consistency as far as making plays and making splash plays. Uh, so, but he's getting to the quarterback and that's, that's a big thing, I guess. Yeah. How many sacks does he have this year? Four. I thought he had more than that. Hmm. Yeah. How many sacks do you have? Two. One with two balls. <laughs> just said that. Oh my god, it's pretty good. I'm editing. I'm not editing that. I'm gonna edit you out of the entire. <laughs> uh oh, editing. This out. Nice. I'm gonna just put a giant X. I'm so, I'm sorry. Gary has five sacks. <laughs> oh, see? <laughs> oh, see, yeah, we knew there was more. <laughs> we knew there was stop, more sacks. Stop short. Um. Okay. So special teams, um, Mason Crosby, what can you say? Elliot's boy has been yes. outstanding. Hit a 51 yarder clutch in the second half. I mean, he hasn't missed a field goal. Happy to be wrong. Um, he's the bright spot on special teams period. End of story. Um, and hell, hell I'm, I'm happy we got him. Um, now JK Scott, I guess punted a little better, but then, you know, the, uh, the the Benny Hill theme that is the punt return slash punt blocking unit. Um, they almost got another one blocked when Oren Burks completely yeah. did like an ole on a um, on a punt where it didn't get blocked, but we were pinned back near our goal line, um, and you just you can't have that. But you know what play irritated me more was when their punt returner caught the ball at the goal line. And we and he had still him brought it out. Yep. And they brought it to the twenty. And I'm like, come on, you gotta yeah. be able to wrap him up and get him down right there. I know. I look. I, our, I, our 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 kickoff return units and punt kick, kick and punt return units are not good. They're not. I, I even said it when he caught it. I'm like, oh, there's a good return. <laughs> at the one yard line, he gets out to the twenty. It's just stupid. Um, now you did send out a uh, a screenshot or a video where they we had a few starters though. I think I think that's what you were pointing out. They had who is it? It was Amos. On our punt coverage, we had uh, Adrian Amos, Robert Tanyan, Al Nazard, um, and Chris Barnes. Mm. So I mean, maybe we'll see. And more Kamal of that. Martin too. I forgot about okay. him. Kamal Martin, I could I could still see him playing special teams in general, just because until he gets elevated to basically starter. But and our gunners right now are Equinemia St. Brown and um, Will Thurman or Will Redmond. Redmond, sorry. Yeah. Jags. <laughs> yes. I mean, Redman is ESB. I mean, did he do? He didn't do anything. He didn't have any targets on. No. Offense or anything. He hasn't been involved in the offense for a long time. Well, he had a cut. I mean, a couple weeks, but he, he was getting, a, he's not an integral part. Um, maybe he'll have a coming out party in the playoffs. That's what they need. They need those, those types of players to come out. They really do. Yeah. Remember, I think, the last time they fed the ball to ESB was when it was a long third down and Rogers threw a perfect pass to him and it was kind of low, but it was like a, it was like a third and 15 and it was like an 18 yard pass and it went right through his hands and arms. He didn't even get a hand on it. It was a perfectly thrown ball. I think that was the last time he got involved in something and it's what, third year player, second year? Third, year, third year, same. Yeah, that's right. And, a lot of injuries there, but still, it's you gotta, you know, it would be great to have, you know, keep going back to it, have some kind of unsung guy show up in the playoffs, you know, where there, I, there's yeah, I think they're gonna need that. I really do. I, I Stern, think they're just could, missing. Could it that. be Sternberger? Could it be ESB? Could it be MVS? Could it be? And I think if any position where they need somebody to have a coming out party, it's it's the receiver. Of yes, the clan. You know, I I, I agree. Um, I mean, Tanyan's their tight end, so I'd be shocked if it was um, Sternberger. But I think between MVS, Lazard, and ESB, they need somebody desperately to. And in the playoffs, you just need one game, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, it'd be nice to carry it or whatever, but um, they're ripe for it. Mm -hmm. So, okay, now other. 
I had to throw in other after special teams in this. So we learned today that uh, former Packers outside linebacker coach Kevin Green passed away today at age 58. Um, he they didn't say what happened, like cause of death, but um, man, that's young. And he was I, I think we'd be selling him extremely short if we said he wasn't he was instrumental in the development of Clay Matthews, won a Super Bowl 2010. And he had that famous old speech. It is pull time. them aside. Yep, man, that's that's like movie stuff right there. It is. You know, yeah, it is. Yeah, um, it gave, and he was. It gave you. It gave you. It gave you goosebumps to listen yeah. to that after they won. You know. Yep, and it is. Um, he was a he was a fun guy. You know, he was pretty like you know pretty seemed pretty genuine. Um, wore his heart on his sleeve, and he was pretty boisterous and whatnot. Yeah, well, as, as a player, and as a player, he was. Oh, he was great. fire. He was fire. Yeah. And he was Just also long, a wrestler. Blonde hair. Don't forget about that. Yeah. He, he had a stint in wrestling. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then he got into coaching. <laughs> um, now, did he go into the Hall of Fame with Favre mm-hmm. or was he already in the Hall of Fame? No, he went in with Favre. Because I do remember, too, when Favre was um, given his speech and he was he was drawing it up with um with Kevin Green about, you know, chasing him down and stuff like that. That was that. that's kind of cool. And it all look, I mean, we're not. We're not ancient here, but man, when you see that kind of stuff, it's like we are getting older. And yeah. when guys, he was young, fifty eight, you know, fifty eight, like, man. Um, yeah, that is. I don't and know. That's it's it's going to be interesting to see what happened with him because yeah. he's just one of those guys you look at, you think they're indestructible. You know what I mean? Yeah, he, right. He, he took care of himself. He did everything right. It seemed. Yeah. What the heck happened? Yeah. yeah. Um. Man, it. Uh, I don't know. It's it's just weird. And it the time we're in, I'm going to get all philosophical. <laughs> but, you know, with, with with COVID and the lockdown and this and that, and it's just like I don't know. And that was it's it's been 10 years since that Super Bowl, man. It just it's it's crazy, you know. It's like, do you remember um when Reggie White died? That was like the first that was not the beginning, but it was like one of those things where it was like that era, it was like, that guy was gone. He was the first yeah, of I those know. guys, you know, well, and, and it was, when, what was it like 2001 in sleep apnea or something like that? 2004. I, I was on vacation with my family in uh, Cancun yeah. when that nose broke. And it was, it was just one of those weird, I mean, Reggie White, obviously different than Kevin Green, but both Packers. And it's just that I have a kind of a similar, where you're just like, whoa, really young dead. from, from the, from the suit. Cause I guess, cause Kevin Green was from Super Bowl 50. Or forty five, excuse me. Um, and and um, and and White was only I think forty three. Yeah, he was even younger, obviously. But uh, sleep apnea, is what got yeah. Me. Um, but yeah. And I, I wrote a blog on 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 hit um Aaron Rodgers draft status and what what when he went through, and when Far was talking about retiring in two thousand four. Uh, on top of of uh, Favre's wife getting breast cancer, the other thing was losing Reggie White because him and Favre were really close, right. and it was it was such a a draw to his emotions when right. White went down, and that's why he was like, "I'm I might just hang it up. I'm done. Like I can't take it anymore." You know, I do remember that photo of Favre being a pallbearer at Reggie White's funeral when they yeah. show him like holding the casket. It's oh. that stuff's it's weird, um, and it's just. When when those special when when either players or coaches from those special times pass on, you're just like you're instantly like, oh man, you know. And it remind like I still I can't believe Super Bowl forty five was freaking ten years ago. It's crazy. Uh, yeah, I, I can't either. Yeah, we need another Super Bowl. We've been <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. been too long. <laughs> Yeah, every, I'd be I'd be happy with every decade, you know. I mean, and you I, know what's what's crazy on that note too about you know getting another Super Bowl. I I distinctly remember having this conversation. We went to the Super Bowl, my my dad, and my family, and I obviously in in Dallas. And after it was over, we were hanging out in like some lounge in Dallas Stadium, and we were you know celebrating all that and yada yada yada. And me and my dad got talking. I said, "Man, it's like we are still just we are just hitting it. We're gonna and we were convinced." Maybe that one. we were going to go to all these Super Bowls, you know? know. But the same thing happened with the Packers yeah. during that era. They went to two, but then they were, it's the same kind of a thing where you're like, man, they're in their prime. You got a great quarterback. You got this, that, or the other. And, you know, we're, yeah. we're going to go to, and man, nothing is guaranteed. Nothing is guaranteed. And, and 
talking about that 2011 season after they're the all talking Super about Bowl, Mahomes like that. I right was now. just that's where I was oh, just gonna go saying that you and know I'm like, like mm, 2011 yeah. we're 15 and one and and yeah. you know, everybody was riding our coattails like they're going again you know and then all of a sudden yeah. I, I, every time I see that with yeah. Mahomes and them I keep thinking the same yeah. thing like, man this reminds me of 2011 to yeah. a T yeah yeah um well let's take it away from him. Exactly. <laughs> I would love nothing more than to beat them in the Super Bowl. Holy cow. Um, yeah. That would be really cool. Yeah. I would like yeah. to do. Pink. And we could hem and haw about, oh, not like I, even I said, I was like, oh, they, they trounce us. But it's like, well, you got to get there. Yeah. Let's get there. You, you can't get trounced unless you get there. Yeah. Yeah. So, and yeah, I also, you know, that whole, on that same thing about, you know, thinking you're going to go to all these Super Bowls, I remember going to, the playoff game in 2011 against the Giants, the divisional round. We were 15 to one and all that. And I remember going to that game going like, it was like an afterthought. I was like, all right, let's get to the AMC championship game. And then in the third quarter, I went, we're going to lose this game. And how quickly that whole thing turned, but literally walking in the stadium going, eh, you know, it was, it was already a foregone conclusion and that, that, that we were going to win and we were done. And then, in the, like I said, in the third quarter, I just remember sink, sinking feeling going, we're going to lose this game yeah. and we're going to we're, we're going to piss away this opportunity. And you remember that how that season ended. I mean, the last two games, we pretty much let all of our starters rest. We didn't play that much. And then we get to the playoffs. We have a bye. And we were so rusty in that giant game. And we were like, what is Aaron Rodgers doing? Like we were seeing him missing passes that he's never missed. You know, the so- other thing that never gets talked about is that the week of the week during was when Joe Philbin's son drowned, died. Do you remember that? Yeah. The week of that playoff game. And it, I remember McCarthy coming to the podium and he was crying mm-hmm. and he was just, it was, that was, nobody really talks about that, but I distinctly remember that. And that hung yeah. over that team, that hung sure. over that team That's big true. time. I think it did. Yeah. It, Cause it, it didn't happen. Like it happened during that week. It was like Wednesday before the game is when when he he drowned. See, yeah. from the outside, you know, we're so disconnected from that. Really, yeah. like I don't, I didn't have that connection to that. Yeah, I mean, I didn't have a connection, but I remember that. No, happened. but I, I, I don't the press conferences and it. I yeah, I, I don't remember that. It but cast it, a pall over that. I, but I remember it being sure. around that time. That must have yeah. been. It was in. It was in week. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And I think it was. I think his son had trouble with. They might have had substance abuse things or whatever, but I'm pretty sure he drowned. Um, it was it was really really sad and sucky, you know. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, things are just so fleeting. So you just gotta, gotta get it while you can, right? Well, you know what? We just we really need just a, a shot. Like we need a a shot of adrenaline, and I feel like if we can just get to the Super Bowl. And if we could just win it, uh, would would twenty twenty be in our afterthought? Like you know, that would I mean? be nice, right? What a, what a way to cap off two thousand twenty, right? The the worst year in the history of our lives by a right. pretty sound margin. Um, yeah, that would um, we deserve it? I think so. I think all so. right, you guys Kansas have city doesn't deserve it. You we guys do. have predictions for the the Titans? Oof. Ooh. Is this is this in Tennessee? No, Lambo on Sunday Night Football. Does, does it matter? <laughs> yes, it does. Um, when we go on the road against good teams, we get waxed. No, um, man, uh, I don't think I'm not going to say 30 points. I'm going to I'm going to predict we will win, but I'm going to say it's going to be 27 to 24. I think the offense is going to be better. I don't think it's going to, I think it's going to be better than what we saw, but yeah, it's going to be tight. Yeah. I, I, I think I say every week, I don't like this matchup, but this, <laughs> I this one, I really don't. I, I, I truly don't. Derek Henry. That's all I can think about is Derek Henry. That's all I think about it. Yeah. I think about Derek Henry. Like some men think about the hottest, hottest woman out there, you know, like, <laughs> whoa, oh whoa. My God. <laughs> well, okay. Well, we were talking about sacks and things earlier, so. <laughs> yes, and uh... no, I, I think I think what you're getting at is that he, he is scary. Yeah, all... yeah. 
he's a beast, you know, and that uh, we haven't, uh, we had difficulty yesterday or Saturday tackling a 210 pound running back. So um, we have trouble tackling anybody. True story. Not a good tackle. True story. Um, uh, This one just, I'm so conflicted because I, I feel like the Packers will win, but like, Tennessee has something to play for. They have the AFC self to play for. They truly are playing for their lives. You know, um, do we I, are too. I mean, we, not we are too. quite as much, but w- we are too. But like, if I look at this, this Tennessee team last year, they got into the playoffs. They snuck into the playoffs by winning their last game against and they Houston. Beat the Ravens. They, they won their last regular season game against Houston to, to get in. And then they went on the road to um, beat new England and then went to the Ravens and beat them. And they were an inspirational talk. 14 and two, right? Right. And they were an inspirational talk amongst many because they're like, the underdog is coming out and conquering. Packers in 2010, man. Right, right. You know, um, where nobody's underdog. Right. But this team, this Tennessee team is is scary as heck, you know? Um, And Rabel, I think, is a damn good coach. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I tend to think offensively they go through the same things that we go through where they kind of run into a lull. Who's their quarterback? Ryan Tannehill. Ugh, gross. No. But they have Derrick Henry, doesn't matter. They could have they could have Derrick Henry at running back and he could play quarterback, and I'd be like, oh boy, I'm scared. <laughs> the, and yeah, I mean, and the one thing they've had issues with is they've had tackle injuries. They lost two starting offensive tackles, so they're susceptible. But they're, the rest of their line is – they're doing pretty well. They're filling in pretty well. Um, I, you know what? I, I'm just going to have to go on the other side of things here. I'm going to say Tennessee 24, Packers Ooh. 23. Ooh. What? Wow. Wow. Yeah. I can't do it. I can't do it. Then don't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. Then don't I, do it. Oh, by the way, I should I should mention that uh, Jamal Williams, his injury was minor. There's a very good chance he could play in this game, and that'd be nice. That's a big deal. That's a yes, huge deal. I think it is. I think that's. I think it showed to be a big deal. I think. I think I, the way I described Jamal Williams was. I mean, I've I've sung uh, his praises before, but I think one of the best ways to describe him is he's one of those rare non-elite players that is. Very important. Yeah. He just is. Yeah. I think, you know, there's, yeah, it doesn't usually happen like that, but um, he's just so sound in everything that he does that it's a drop off. You know what I mean? He's not a pro bowler, but he's just so solid at everything he does. I, I'll term it like this. If you like a good oil and vinaigrette dressing, he is the oil that makes that salad just so good. I did not see that analogy. <laughs> okay, I'll take so it. I, so I, the the odds is basically even up. We're favored by three, three and you know three point mm-hmm. five. And I had what would I say twenty seven twenty four? Yeah, at, but it's at home, so like that's just kind of the you know that's kind of what you get, right? Home home gives you three points. Doesn't yeah, it, it does. Yeah, it does. I I just. And I don't feel good about it, but I, but I also feel like, you know, I, uh, the last game, I feel like there's like the bounce back. I don't know. I'm saying 31, 21 Packers. Ooh. I'm, I'm all in the bandwagon. I'm a bandwagon guy. <laughs> <laughs> Ellie has in. two sacks today. I'm all in. I'm all in. I'm all in, man. We're it's, this is it. This is our year or we're done. I, or no. we're done. <laughs> oh no, I'm not saying if we lose this game, we're done. But no, but this is our year. We got to yeah. be. You know what? Like if they're not focused on winning, they got to be focused on winning this game, and they got to be focused on winning the next. Yeah, game. you don't want them to have the attitude of you know it doesn't matter. Yeah, because it does matter. Because it's not conference, and right we, uh, now look the, at Chicago. Now the I scary mean. thing is that. Like they won't play Chicago again, but they could play the Titans again in the playoffs, right? So they could play Chicago too. If Chicago were to win their last two games and Arizona loses one, Chicago's getting in the no, but I, no, but what I worry about is the effect where if we play the Titans again, it's a good thing because we'll play them in the Super Bowl, right? Well, right, because they're AFC, oh, right? They are AFC. Yeah, yep. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's not so bad. Um, yeah, but I do worry about um. Yeah, I do worry about playing another NFC team twice, you know. So, yeah, playing the Bears twice would be terrible. Um, 
Yeah. Well, you mean playing him three times is what you're saying. Well, playing him two more times, right? I mean, like, so, so, it, yeah. I mean, like, I mean, I remember because that came, you know, that can come back to bite you. Like, beating a team twice, like, in close succession like that, that is hard. Yes. And the funny thing when you talk about that, when we won the Super Bowl in 2010, yeah. we beat the Bears in the regular season twice and then beat yeah. them, obviously, in the NFC Championship. I know. It's a tough, I went it's to a the tough last... thing to do. I went to, to that beat Bear a game team at three home. Times. I know. I went to that Bear game at home to. Um, to yeah, and we just. Went to go, where uh, Jay Cutler threw a pick to uh, Nick Collins. Oh, yeah. Oh, I never forget that, that. That stadium when he picked that thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. Nick, Nick Collins. Oh, but God. that's why, you know, we knew it. We knew it. like it's everything's on the line and it was uh, not a it was tense. Yeah, I just I don't uh, people. You know what? The other thing I saw on YouTube the other day, the Bears I, are in if they win the next two. And Come Arizona on. loses. Oh, OK. OK. You know what I forgot about 2010? People forget this. We don't even make the playoffs if Deshaun Jackson doesn't take that punt back for for a touchdown against That's the right. Giants. It's true. And that he took that thing back as time expired. Last play of the game. We don't even there is no there is no playoffs if that doesn't happen. Yeah. Think about that. That close. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing to in the in the Eagles game. Uh, the first wild card game of the Super Bowl 2010, Desmond Bishop made a shoestring tackle on who was it, um, Macklin or somebody, one of their, it was either receiver or running back that um, saved a touchdown. Shoestring. And we would have lost that game. Well, that's why, that's why the, it's a that game. You know? yep. about. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, it is. Yeah, but it the is. but the crazier one was the Deshaun Jackson because for sure yeah. he could have that punter could have just punted it out of bounds, right? Yeah. And they would <laughs> right. punted it right to him. Right. Yeah, the crazy he J.K. scouted it. <laughs> Actually, I heard somebody. I remember how I said uh, MVS. I said, uh, "Who did I say?" I said, uh, "Kevin King is the MVS, the secondary." Andy Herman called. Uh, he goes. Uh, J.K. Scott is the MVS of punters. <laughs> Interesting. That's All right, are we good. wrapped up or what? Yeah, going we're... off the rails, Andy. I've been off the rails. Actually, I deleted him at the beginning of the podcast, so nobody even nobody else is even hearing him. By the way, nice. Yeah, he's xed out. Two sacks. This is really just the Jeremy. Show. <laughs> there's, an, hey, there's another. <laughs> there's another T-shirt. <laughs> You, you, you're gonna have a lot of you're gonna have a lot of man for sale that oh have my one, god that have this one is, sale. Wait, this is funny. I have to tell you, and I have to tell you this in the podcast. It's funny. It has nothing to do with this, but it's really funny. <laughs> so, do you remember when Tesla came out with that uh, truck? Or I think they're still coming out with it, and it's like all angular, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So somebody somebody came out with this fake ad for you know those truck nuts. Yeah, and they it was like they were like polygon, like square, <laughs> looking. <laughs> It was. I'll have to send it to you in Slack. It was hilarious. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm not doing it justice describing it. Seeing the picture is great. Yeah. Well, you know what? We're gonna switch to Discord, and then your fans can be in the Discord with you, and then they, yeah, there can be lots of inside Discord. jokes. Yeah. Next book. time. Next time. All right. Yeah. All right. Go, go back. back go. go, baby. Podcast, podcast. Share. I know, right?